In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And welcome to our video version of worship for this uh, Sunday, the 22nd of August. And it's the 12th Sunday after Trinity. And today in our gospel reading, uh, Colin's going to read that for us and we're going to hear disciples being challenged really by Jesus' uh, preaching um, and his teaching and uh, a bit of a sense of should I stay or should I go? Can I cope with this or not? And I'm going to be giving a bit of thought to that later on. But first of all, let us turn to prayer. Believing that Christ is the Holy One of God, we often still fall, sh fall short of his example. Yet Christ is patient, and when we faithfully confess our failings, he forgives us and draws us back to the heart of his community. For all the times we have lived for our own desires, have ignored the will of God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we have ignored the plight or needs of individuals, nations or the environment. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times we would rather remain silent than proclaim the good news of the gospel. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to hear from Colin with the Gospel reading from John. This is a reading from John. Jesus said to the crowd, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which you, your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats the bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones who did not believe and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe, and now that you are the Holy One of God. Should I stay or should I go? That's a classic song by The Clash. 
And it's a song that came to mind as I read this gospel reading with this sense that uh, Jesus is talking to the disciples and various people are deciding they're going to clear off. They're going to go. They can't cope with uh, following Jesus. So that question, should I stay or should I go? I once went to see The Clash at Brixton Academy many years ago. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, The Clash, you'll, you'll need to uh, Google them or something. Um, but uh, I went to see The Clash at Brixton Academy and it was an absolutely packed gig. And actually, it was quite a scary event when they actually came on stage. When they first came on stage, the crowd went wild. I was near the front and the crowd just started moving. I mean, there wasn't room to pogo as such, but people were bouncing up and down. And uh, the crowd was moving around. And I was actually lifted off my feet and found myself moving with the crowd with no control. Um, and got a bit of that feeling of should I stay or should I go? I think I, I actually sort of moved a little bit further back um, to a little bit more um, secure ground, so to speak. Fantastic gig. But um, today's gospel, people are deciding that the experience of following Jesus is either too perplexing, too confusing, too challenging, or just too scary. And they are going. And I suppose what I wanted us to think about this morning is that Following Jesus is not an easy thing to do. And we live in a, a country, in a world where lots of people choose not to follow Jesus. And uh, that's a decision that many people make and is probably quite a reasonable decision for them to make. It might, might not uh, be the best decision, but actually following Jesus is not an easy thing to do. There are many reasons why we might choose not to follow Jesus. It might be because we don't understand and it doesn't all make sense to us. It might be because of tragedy that we experience in our lives that undermines our faith and challenges um, us. It might be because of the ridicule of others that we choose not to follow Jesus. It might be because of the arguments of others that they give us good reasoned logical arguments why there are problems with this and problems with that and that their arguments might make sense to us and that might be a reason why we choose not to follow Jesus. It might be because we don't want to change our habits or even our addictions that we have, that Jesus might be a challenge to those. Actually, it's just too difficult. We want to stay with what it is that has um, got its control over us. It might be that we don't want to follow Jesus because it's just easier on a Sunday morning to stay in bed. It might be that it's just easier not to bother. But with Peter, we might want to say, but where else can I go? What is the alternative? Where else will I find connection with the source of all being? Where else will I find acceptance, forgiveness and love? Where else will I find eternal life? I pray that I will have the courage to say with Peter and that you will have the courage to say with Peter, Lord, to whom else can we turn? You have the words of eternal life. Amen. And so we're going to turn to prayer. We're going to spend a moment in quiet as we bring before God the needs of the world.
as we pray for Afghanistan, the situation there, as we pray for our own concerns, things in our lives, let's keep a moment's quiet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And today we're going to finish with um, a hymn from the Iona community. Uh, will you come and follow me if I but call your name? But first of all, a prayer of blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let me see.